Hello, my name is Brendan Kelly, and on behalf of the Breast, Endocrine and General Surgery Service at St. Vincent's University Hospital, I would like to present a case of complicated splenic injury after colonoscopy. The case is of a 73-year-old female whose past medical history consisted of hypothyroidism and hypercholesterolemia, and whose surgical history was of varicose veins and an open appendicectomy. Her only medication was alteroxin, she had no anticoagulation and no dr known drug allergies. The patient was admitted to a peripheral hospital with a stable P or bleed. She underwent a colonoscopy and polypectomy. Two hours after the procedure, she became unstable and underwent an emergency laparotomy. A laceration, a vulgian injury to her spleen was identified. An emergency splenectomy was performed. Her post-operative recovery was complicated by a persistent low haemoglobin refractory transfusion. On CT, a psoas hematoma was seen and she was transferred to a tertiary referral centre. Her laboratory investigations on transfer included a white cell count of 22.6, a low haemoglobin, and her iron ore was 1.4. She had abdominal imaging, and a CT with oral and IV contrast is shown here. We highlight a large psoas hematoma with a maximal diameter of 6 cm, and also highlight the right psoas muscle for comparison. While splenic injury is a recognised complication of colonoscopy, the most common complications are of bowel perforation and haemorrhage. Splenic injury is an incidence of around 5 in 100,000 cases and a mortality rate of 5%. It was first reported by Huerian Zenner in 1974. To give some perspective, we identify three large case series with over 100,000 patients which report no cases of splenic injury and one further series of 6,000 cases with one splenic injury. Splenic injury it tends to occur in women more than men with a mean age of 62 years. It is caused by a combination of excess pressure and barotrauma and patient factors. This results in excess pressure on the splenocolic ligament, which joins the anterior capsule of the spleen next to the splenic flexure. Avulsions of the capsule or laceration of the spleen then lead to hemorrhage. We show a representative graphic to illustrate this point and add in the splenocolic ligament or perhaps some post-operative adhesions. One can imagine how excess pressure on the scope as it transverses the splenic flexure could cause undue pressure on this tissue, potentially causing damage to the spleen. We show a video in a model to further illustrate how excess tension on this region could damage the spleen. Another potential mechanism of injury is that of looping of the scope, especially at the location of the splenic flexure where it can be difficult to navigate around the corner. One can appreciate how it could be difficult to biopsy a lesion at the unusual location of the transverse colon without putting undue pressure on the spleen. There are several risk factors for damage to the spleen. These include difficulty in intubation, looping of the instrument, traction on the splenocolic ligament, adhesions between the colon and spleen, presence of a large polyp or mass at the splenic flexure, or excess external pressure on the left hypochondrium. In 71% of cases, symptoms developed within 24 hours. Abdominal pain is the most common presenting complaint, with care sign, hypotension, and drop in hematocrit being described also. While splenic injury is generally noticed on CT, diagnosis by ultrasound and at laparotomy have also been described. While conservative management is recorded, as is splenic artery embolization, operative management with exploratory laparotomy is the mainstay of therapy. The vast majority of these cases underwent splenectomy, with a minority being treated by mesh repair. The mortality of a splenic injury at colonoscopy is 5.4%, and it is interesting to note that when removed spleens are examined pathologically, over 70% have grossly abnormal spleen pathology, including amyloidosis. Returning to our case, where there is not only an injury to the spleen, but also a large psoas hematoma. To illustrate the etiology of this, we show a similar graphic to before, with the psoas muscles included, and rotate 90 degrees. One can easily appreciate how the same shearing force of the scope transversing the splenic flexure could also have damaged the lumbar vessels as they enter the psoas muscle. Management in our case was by percutaneous drainage and interventional radiology. 
It can be seen that initially the hematoma was heterogeneous and thus not amenable to drainage. But a follow-up CT taken two weeks later shows that the tissue has homogenized and can now be drained. A final image shows the patient after insertion of a pigtail drain and demonstrates excellent interval resolution of the hematoma. The case concludes with our patient receiving inpatient treatment for infection of the collection with a candida species. She was discharged with a stable hemoglobin and normal inflammatory markers with four-week follow-up. She was also given prophylaxis against overwhelming post infection with vaccination and lifelong antibiotics. To conclude, splenic injury is a rare complication of colonoscopy, but with an associated 5% mortality, a high index of suspicion is needed. Abdominal pain within 24 hours of colonoscopy requires further investigation. The authors would like to acknowledge the support received from the National Surgical Training Centre at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Thank you very much for listening.